Out of all the vertebrate factions still playable in the game, by far the best suited for the aquatic movement zone is the fish faction. In general, fish are much more viable in water than any other vertebrate, but what happens when a fish player decides that they want to leave the water and become more adapted to living on land? One thing I do want to make clear though is that this isn't a new strategy at all. In fact, if early fish had never left the water, there wouldn't be any non-fish vertebrates. This is because all amphibian, reptile, bird and mammal builds can trace their evolution back to these ancient lobefin fish that eventually turn their fins into legs, and hauled themselves onto dry land. But why? Why would the fish choose to leave its most suitable habitat, and venture onto land? There are a few different reasons. First of all, competition. Sometimes, if the aquatic zone becomes too competitive and crowded, it can be a good idea to just leave it behind, even if just for a small while. Even though in my ogre faced spider video, I talked about how trying to find ways to avoid competition isn't usually a good choice, because this doesn't solve the problem, it merely delays it. There are exceptions to this rule. If there is too much competition, resources like food can become scarce, which means sometimes most players, both low tiers and high tiers, eradicate themselves in this way. So, judging when to avoid competition is a crucial skill, and if your original biome is just too crowded, it can pay to always have a backup plan. Another possible reason for fish to spend XP on terrestrial abilities is opportunity. Sometimes, the best loot is only located on land which would make spending XP on land traits a smart investment. Other possible reasons for the voyage onto land include reproduction and changes in the environment that force the fish to adapt, like draughts or shift in temperature. So, with all that out of the way, what is the most viable amphibious fish, and when is it a good idea to be a fish out of water? First of all, like in many of my other videos, I will admit that it is not possible to cover all builds in this category without making a 2 hour video, so I will only be focusing on the builds that are rather unique. Remember to comment down below if you believe I missed anything important. Different fish builds have different levels of mastery over land. On one side of the spectrum, there's players that aren't able to stay out of the water for long despite their adaptations, because of possible dangers like dehydration and predators. On the other side of the spectrum, builds like mudskippers can spend almost their entire playthrough out of the water as long as they stay hydrated. So, what's the most viable strategy for fish trying to enter a new movement zone? Let's explore this question by analyzing some currently playable builds and seeing how useful they are in their biome. First of all, we have a classic amphibious fish build, the walking catfish. It has decent solutions to solve most of the major problems amphibious fish face on land. They have the ability to breathe air, a vital skill for surviving on land. To accomplish this without lungs, the walking catfish player base chose to spend more XP on their gills, to prevent them from collapsing so easily when lacking water. Walking catfish are also capable of staying mostly upright using their pectoral fins, which is certainly a useful perk to have because of the extra height. They also move around by wriggling across dry land, moving in a snake-like fashion. Like many other amphibious fish, the walking catfish player base likely evolved the ability to move on land because they often inhabit temporary bodies of water that dry up sooner or later. So, the terrestrial abilities allow them to move to another body of water if this happens. Finding said body of water is a different matter. To find what they're looking for, walking catfish players whip their whisker-like barbels through the air. These barbels are full of olfactory sensors that allow catfish players to spend almost no XP on sight and instead invest more in smell and touch, which is usually a great trade-off because catfish like to live in murky waters that limit sight, which makes smell and touch much more useful. However, all that doesn't help if these players dry up, so walking catfish decided to swap out traditional fish scales for a more unconventional adaptation, mucus. Not only is this mucus more useful at protecting walking catfish from dehydration, it makes the player harder to grab which is a nice defense technique too. What's more, walking catfish possess sharp spines on their dorsal and pectoral fins which can deal decent damage and, if used at the right moment, surprise their opponents enough to get away. The walking catfish is not only an amphibious fish, it has also proven its viability in multiple biomes. While originating from Southeast Asia, different walking catfish player bases are being established everywhere, from North America to Asia. In these new biomes, 
the walking catfish have thrived and decimated the player bases of many native builds, which further proves their viability. Another catfish that is also in the process of wreaking havoc on player bases all over the world is the armored catfish. The armored catfish is another versatile fish build which proves that being a fish out of water isn't always bad, as long as you spend enough XP on terrestrial skills. One thing that almost every amphibious fish ends up doing at some point during their transition is spend more XP on modifying their gills. The armored catfish said screw that, I'll just breathe through my stomach lining. These builds possess lots of blood vessels in their stomachs, which means that they have the ability to gulp down air and breathe on land. Thanks to this adaptation, the armored catfish, like many other amphibious fish, are able to live in bodies of water with properties like low oxygen or salinity that other fish builds aren't able to survive in. Like the walking catfish, the armored catfish also possesses defensive spines, which gives it a rather unorthodox defense technique. When threatened, these players extend their fins to make it harder for predators like crocodiles birds and river otters to swallow them. As I briefly mentioned previously, armored catfish have rather recently been causing trouble in new biomes. Their traits and abilities give them a nice edge against most other fish, and because armored catfish feed on algae located at the bottom of rivers, they often consume the eggs of native fish builds in the process. All that combined has allowed the armored catfish to grief certain players extremely hard, and definitely secures it a decent spot on the tier list. Of course, Catfish aren't the only amphibious fish, and our next fish build could possibly be considered the tardigrade of the amphibious fish. Let's just hope it's not as useless as the tardigrade. Anyways, our next build is the Mumachog. The Mumachog is a small type of killifish that is famous for its ability to live in multiple extreme aquatic conditions other fish usually can't survive in at once. Those extreme conditions include extremely varied salinity, low oxygen, drastic changes in temperature, high levels of pollution and even on land as long as there is moist air for them to breathe. Fun fact, this makes the Mumachog a great test subject for humans trying to understand the mechanics of the game further, which allowed the Mumachog to become the first fish build to go to space in the history of evolution life. In terms of their level of mastery over the terrestrial movement zone, it is undoubtedly lower than the previous two catfish builds, but given its versatility and survival capabilities in all those other environments, I felt I just had to include it. To give you an idea of how drastic a temperature change the Mumachog can survive, they can tolerate rapid changes between 15 and 30 degrees Celsius, and the lowest and highest temperatures they can survive in is 6 and 35 degrees Celsius respectively. Not only that, they can live in water with salinity levels ranging from 0.4 to 100 parts per thousand. To the amateur evolution live player, that doesn't sound very impressive, until you consider the fact that seawater salinity level is only about 35 parts per thousand. All that makes the Mumachaga fish build that can survive an end, unlike the tardigrade, actually live in many different environments. But is the strategy actually viable? Well, yes, it can be viable. Unlike the tardigrade, which is like an impractically indestructible cockroach combined with a bacterium on steroids, the Mumachog's adaptations are actually useful. Since most players won't have playthroughs that contain asteroid impacts or nuclear explosions, the tardigrade skills aren't useful at all. While the Mumachog's skills help it live in many different environments normal players usually shun. So, no, the Mumachog is definitely not as low tier as the tardigrade, but given its small size and low base stats, I would say that the Mumachog is a C tier build that went a little over the top with its environmental adaptability skill tree. Our next build is also an extreme survivor, and it has remained almost unchanged for hundreds of millions of years. It's the Lungfish, one of the closest living relatives of the fish that gave rise to all tetrapods. The Lungfish build is truly yet another survivalist build. It still retains features reminiscent to builds like the Tiktaalik and Hynerpotin, such as lobe fins and primitive lungs. If we don't count tetrapods which evolve from fish like this, then the Lungfish is an incredible survivor in yet another regard. It is one of the last two lobe fin fish alive today, the other being the coelacanth. Comment down below if you would like a separate video on that. Anyways, back to the lungfish. As we know by now, all amphibious fish are more prepared for draughts than the purely aquatic builds, but the lungfish can stay out of the water for by far the longest time. During droughts, lungfish players burrow into the ground and, 
at the right depth, cocoon themselves in mucus, which solidifies and traps moisture inside, allowing the player to vastly decrease the rate their water bar decreases. The lungfish player can now enter its estivation phase, a similar dormant period to hibernation, except it's for builds trying to skip the summer, not the winter. And yes, in hot biomes prone to droughts, skipping summer can be just as viable as skipping winter. During this period of time, the lungfish player uses up the muscles in its tail to fill its food bar. The strategy works excellent for the lungfish, which can now stay relatively dormant for 3 to 5 years until it detects that fresh water has become available again. However, in normal gameplay, the lungfish has mediocre stats at best, simply because it spent so much XP on evolving this ability. Of course, given the fact that this build has remained somewhat viable for hundreds of millions of years, you can't exactly say the lungfish is a low tier. I would say that this build averages around B tier, because while it isn't a high tier build that completely invalidates others, it is still one of the best survivalist choices in the game. And finally, we have the amphibious fish most well adapted to land, the mudskipper. Mudskippers spend so much time on land that some players actually mistake them for amphibians. Mudskippers, like practically all the builds I've mentioned so far, can breathe air and move on land. What's more, mudskippers roll in the mud to stop themselves from drying out, which would be dangerous for these players because similarly to amphibians, mudskippers can only breathe air when wet, meaning that they are rather limited by this weakness and cannot stray far from water. One of their more special abilities is skipping. Skipping allows the mudskipper to move faster across land, climb trees and leap into the air. Mudskippers are good diggers as well, excavating tunnels to use for hiding and reproduction. And, if rival players approach, a male mudskipper will try to scare them off by raising its back fence as a means of intimidation. And, if that doesn't work, the player will open their mouth to show dominance. All that makes the mudskipper an interesting build but I don't believe these players are high tier for a few different reasons. Firstly, the Mudskipper has puny stats. Its small size, rather low mobility and abysmal damage make it pathetic in PvP. Secondly, Mudskippers have few good abilities. Their leap may be fun to play around with, but once the initial excitement of playing a new build wears off, you quickly realize how little abilities Mudskippers have. And finally, the Mudskipper's biggest weakness is that it is essentially a fish version of a frog, with all the weaknesses but none of the strengths. The fact that Mudskippers became amphibious in the first place was a dangerous choice, because unless you play your cards just right, being a fish out of water is not going to end pretty for you, simply because you don't have unlimited XP and so you will almost never be the top build of the water or the dry land. Similarly to amphibians, the Mudskipper's reliance on water to breathe air constrains it to moist environments, which, combined with their pathetic base stats, makes the Mudskipper air tier build. The moral of all this is that while being an amphibious fish is a nice skill to have, Spending too much XP on terrestrial abilities will likely lead to you essentially becoming an amphibian, one of the most low tier vertebrates in the game on average. So that's the amphibious fish tier list. If you are wondering why none of these builds are S tier, it's simply because unless you have base stats as amazing as builds like the hippo, crocodile or jaguar, being amphibious doesn't help you master two biomes, it simply makes you less viable in either, because the XP you could have spent on aquatic abilities went into features that would allow you to become amphibious. So, while amphibious fish are certainly versatile, with some of them even becoming invasive species, I don't believe any of them are able to rank in S tier. Comment down below what you would like to see on the channel next. Hit that like button with a mud skipper and subscribe to my channel. Share this video with all your catfish friends on social media. Thanks for watching and just to let you know most amphibious fish are actually low tier garbage.